just have a lot of floating in here. I don't think I'm out of chain. That's better. Finished channels. Oh, I'm having to. I don't know how long this is going to go down, but Okay, so I see that I have two people watching. Go ahead and type in the comments so I know who's all here. Let me 
Oops, let me get in here. Okay, hi Cameron. Let's see if anybody else is going to show up. Today is going to be really important because I'm going to show you on the computer how to take your test from home. Hi Sophia. In addition, we'll go over everything that's going to be on the test, but I think the more important thing is to show you what you need to do. Okay. I'm going to pull up my computer here and let me zoom in so we can see better. Okay, so this is what I see from a creator's perspective. It kind of shows me how many people's um, watching and I can see in the comments, you know, I can read the comments too. So this isn't going to be ideal to show you how to do this, but I think you'll get enough that you're going to know what you need to do. I haven't heard anything from Lucas, so I guess he'll have to definitely watch the replay. So I'm thinking that because yesterday they t issued a stay-at-home order, I'm pretty sure we're going to probably not have school next week. That's just my thought. So I would like for you guys by Friday or on Friday to try and take test four. You're going to have to do it at home. You're going to have to have a table. You can't do it sitting on the couch or sitting on your bed. And you're going to have to have a computer that has Wi-Fi and has a camera on the front of it. Which most computers do have the cameras, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into your eCampus. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Once you're into eCampus, you're going to have to go to your practice test. So we're going to go to practice test and then you're going to go down here and you're going to have to click this here where it says directions for using lockdown browser. So that's where you're going to have to go on your computer. If you're watching this YouTube video on your computer, don't do this now because it will lock you from your screen and you won't be able to see everything. Okay, so once you get on there, here's the directions. So basically, you're going to click this link and you're going to download the lockdown thing. You'll use the lockdown browser to open eCampus. You're going to go to that test and do the test that you're going to want to do, which in this case would be test four. And then you're going to follow the directions using the uh, respondus monitor. That's just the computer thing. And then you'll just answer your tests like normal. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go there. This is going to give you the link and you'll just come over here and you'll hit the install button. I've already installed this last night, so it's not going to work on here. But basically, you, it'll pop up down here on the corner and you'll just click on that and then you'll go to your downloads and just download it from your downloaded section on your computer. Okay. Alright, so once that's downloaded on your desktop, you should have a lock screen browser there. Alright, now I'm going to try and show you this part. Um, it may yell at me because I'm, I have the live browsing, like this is how we're streaming is from this YouTube right here. So because I'm using my browser to YouTube, we might get disconnected. If we do, then I'm just not going to be able to show you that, and I'm just going to have to talk more about it. I tried to get it on my laptop so I could do both, but we're just going to have to wing it and see how it goes. So if we get disconnected, just stay on the YouTube channel page, and then I'll just have to X this stuff out, and I'll be back in a few minutes, okay? All right, so we're going to click on that. And it will immediately make changes to your computer. You just hit yes to whatever that says. And then it's going to open up. And hopefully you'll still be able to see all this. But it's supposed to not let you open any apps on your thing. Alright, so it's telling me that I have to close Skype. So, of course, I will close that process. Um, so you pretty much have to log out of all of your stuff. 
All right, give me a I'm here thing on your thing because it'll pop up on my phone. So just give me a, some kind of message to let me know that we're still connected or if I need to restart this. Okay, that's good. I'm glad to hear this is still working. So you're not going to be able to open up any apps on here. You're just going to log in like you normally would onto your eCampus thing. That is not my password. And then you'll have to do the duo factor thing probably with your phone. Just like normal. I did this last night. It didn't take this long last night. I'm not sure why. Maybe I spelled something wrong. Let's try it again. Okay. I must have spelled something wrong. Okay, then you're just going to go in here. So you'll click on there. And then I'm just going to show you the practice test so you can see what it looks like on Friday or whenever you, you're going to have to decide when you're going to do your test, honestly. I can't really issue and tell you when to do it because you're going to need a quiet area and you're going to need a desk space. You need something where you're not interrupted and you don't have your cell phone with you. So you're going to have to designate that time frame where you can allot 50 minutes to just do your test. All right, so I'm going to click on practice tests. You will really click on the real test down over here, but I'm just going to show you the practice part. And this will be practice. I'm just doing this down here. Practice for online test, and it requires that browser. So this is just the, the practice to show you what it does. Okay, I'm going to hit begin, and I, I already did this last night, so I have to start a new submission. Alright, so you just agree to the terms of use. I don't usually read that, so I'm just going to hit agree. Maybe. I'll try clicking with it. Maybe there's a checkbox you have to check. I didn't think so. Why is this not? It worked perfect last night. This is the way technology always goes, isn't it? It won't even let you refresh. That did. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll have to try it again. Hopefully, you won't have problems like this when you're going to actually do your test. Like I said, I did it the other night and it worked just fine. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, we're gonna go to practice tests. Click on that, and hopefully it'll let me agree to the terms this time. And you can do this practice test as many times as you want also. Okay, there, now it finally worked. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is a webcam check. So, obviously you can see my phone, which I'm recording on. But do you see your image in the window? I'm just going to back up just a little bit. There we go, yes. 
And then it says, um, while speaking in your normal voice, say the alphabet or count to 10, record five seconds of video. So just wait till it tells you. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're just going to continue. Uh, all right. So it says during this exam, you shouldn't access other resources, a phone, a tablet, your notes, a book, etc. Okay. Or communicate with other people. Even if they're just in the room asking you a random question, you need to make sure you're telling your parents not to disrupt you for this 55 minutes or 50 minutes, however it is. Okay, you need to stay in your seat and focus on the computer screen until the exam is complete. That'll be a lot easier than you think because the, the questions are on the screen. So in, if an interruption occurs, you have to explain, and this is at the end of the test, what happened by speaking into the webcam. And then remember, you can't exit your test until all the questions are done and it's submitted for grading. Don't get up and leave the room and then come back or anything like that. Okay, so they want you to make sure that you avoid other children or people. Turn off your TV. Don't have music playing. Nothing like that. Make sure you run the webcam check. That means do this on your own computer, okay? Try this before you do the real test. Um, make sure that other people aren't streaming or using up a lot of the internet connection. Okay, this is what's important. Don't lay on the computer on the lap, on a bed, or on the floor, and you're not supposed to sit on the, a bed, a couch, or the floor. So you need to sit on an actual table with a chair or desk. Okay, and you will be using your built-in webcam, so avoid tilting the screen after the webcam's set up. Okay, don't wear sunglasses or hats. Also make sure you dress appropriately because they will be watching you and they can see you. Make sure you got, like, not your pajamas on t-shirt and jeans and then make sure that your room's well lit and that they can see you really well on the screen and then they might turn off the duo factor so you might not even need your cell phone to log in because I didn't need mine so you might not need yours anyway so just make sure that all of that is in another room and then you can't do anything else while you're doing the test so you can't get on any other browsers Okay, then you're going to have to have a student photo. So this is just you taking your picture, basically. So you just take your picture. Okay, that's easy. All right, then you have to have your, your, um, your ID. This can be the student ID or your driver's license. I'm just gonna use this little picture of a card for now. It really won't work, but use a real picture. Okay, so that's, that's my ID. Okay, so you guys have a happy Easter. All right, then environmental check. So make sure that your computer is clear of paper, books, phones, etc. I think you can have um, blank notebook paper, but if it were me, I would show the camera your notebook paper that is completely blank before you start your test. Okay, and then you'll start the recording. You're going to record your area around you just so that they can see what you have on your table is completely empty which mine is a complete disaster because this is my craft room and I've got crafts everywhere but you're gonna need to record your setting so I would probably just record everything on the back of you which you can't see right now just you know tilt your computer down so you're recording your work area your table in front of you record your background just so that you cover yourself so they don't think that you're cheating because WVU does take the cheating very very seriously all right so we're done recording we're gonna stop that okay I'm gonna continue that okay so facial that so you can see I'm not in there so it gave me a down because it can't see me it sees the phone so we're gonna tilt that where it can see me maybe all right so that's better so it has to see who you are and then you will start your test and then you'll just go through and you'll answer the questions 
So was this the greatest intervention ever? I agree. Was this a valuable that you can do later? Hopefully this helped so you know what you're doing when you have to do your test. Oh, oh it yelled at me because I wasn't showing my face the whole time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I guess it will yell at you if you don't have that webcam shown on your face. It's got to watch you the whole time. I never thought I'd say this, but I want to go back to school. Yes. Okay, and then you just save and submit. When you're done, if you have any kind of problems, like somebody came and talked to you or something, I would definitely mention that on there. Like I said, make sure you're not cheating. You can have your scientific calculator. I would probably show it to the camera, the web camera, just the front and the back so they know that there's nothing on your calculator. You cannot have a graphing calculator, so this one would be a big no. So this one's a no, this one's a yes. All right, and then you'll just submit that, and then that is how you will do your test. So I figured I would do that part first before we did the study guide, because I figured if you're going to rewatch this video, that's probably the part you would rewatch. All right, so did that make sense? Give me a yes or a no in the comments so I know that yes, I'm still with you or no, I'm completely lost. Okay, good. Oh, good, Lucas, you were able to join us. That's good. All right, and then you're going to want your study guide out okay so you will just have to do that like i said you're gonna i would like for you to try to do it before friday i really don't see us coming back next week i could be wrong but what's the harm if we did it by friday anyway then we can just start next week and like i said the sooner we get done then when we do go back then you're just done that's okay that you were late lucas don't worry about it all right so you should have your study guide out we're going to start on the back page where it's blank first. Okay. Alright, we're going to start with the essay question. And of course, this is only similar to the essay question they give you. You know, I can't give you the exact one that they give you, but this should give you a generalized what you should look for. Okay, so what can go wrong? In the law of signs. when given a SSA triangle. And then it will give you, or at least the version I looked at, gave you an example. So EG A equals two, C equals one, and capital C equals 50 degrees. All right, so I will wait a second for you guys to write that down on the back of your paper. Okay, so if they give you some numbers, I would try to, you know, use some kind of formula or draw a picture on your scrap paper to figure out what is going on. Of course, we're going to use a lot of signs. So if I was to draw a picture, I would make this be capital A, little a, capital B, little b, capital C, um, little c. 
Okay, so this one is one, this one's 50 degrees, and this one is two. So I would use the lava signs. You know you're using the lava signs because you got your diagonals going. So we got sine 50 divided by one equals the sine of capital A divided by two. So anytime they give me a problem, even though it obviously something's going to go wrong, just work with it anyway. So that way you can explain in a sentence better what's going wrong. Okay, of course we're going to cross multiply. So I have two times the sine of 50 equals, and one times the sine of A is just the sine of A. Are we good so far? All right, now you could work this out a couple different steps from here. One step you could do is figure out what is 2 times the sine of 50. When you're doing this, um, especially on this test, you're going to be converting the whole time back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between radians and degrees. So before you do anything, make sure that calculator is in degrees. And I can already see from yesterday, mine's still in radians. And like I said, it's going to be the most important on this test to check that the whole time. Okay, so 2 times the sine of 50, that gives me 1.53 is giving me the sine of A. Alright, so I'm going, and I know you don't get to use your calculator on the test, but just for me to show you this better, it makes more sense if we're looking at the graph. So if I had the sine of x, and I would graph that, it's going to look like that. And what I'm really looking at is what is the range in between. All right, so we want to figure out what is the highest and the lowest peaks. You could look at your table. Hopefully you remember the graph that the highest it gets is 1, and the lowest it gets is to negative 1. So it has to be between 1 and negative 1. So if you look at 1.53, already the problem is, is that 1.53 is greater than 1, and it doesn't fit in that range. So what's wrong is that this does not fit in the range. Therefore, you do not have a triangle. Okay, now another thing you could have done with this is you could have gotten A all together. And so what undoes a sine would be a sine inverse. So if I did the sine inverse of 2 times the sine of 50... Okay, that gives me a domain error. So that does not work. Or you could do the sine inverse of 1.53 since we kind of figured that out if you weren't sure. And again, that gives you a domain error because this is not in the domain. Okay? Because you do not have a triangle. So this does so what what goes wrong with side side angle is that sometimes it doesn't form a triangle. So that's what's wrong with that problem. And your book does a really good job explaining all the different types of triangles that you can have. And let me try to find that page. But I would definitely look over that before your test. 
because he might ask you, you know, when do I have two triangles? When do I have one triangle? And you kind of need to know what the cases are. Okay, so what really happened with this triangle is the one side was too short to form the triangle. All right, so page 688 in your book goes over the different triangles. And so I would definitely know that for your test. So it's right up here on the top. Let's scoot it up here. So this is page 688. And you have your no triangle, your one triangle, your two triangles, and then um, again the one triangle. Oh, one right triangle and just one regular triangle. Okay, so I was like, what's the difference? That one's right and that one's regular. So I would definitely know these four cases on page 688 for your test. All right, now let's go back to the beginning. Let's see on the version of the test that I looked at, what was on there. Okay, obviously number one is on there. Number two was on there, word for word. And if it were me when I work out number two, I would use these for the rest of the test. Okay, so if you forgot what um, this formula was, just go back to this question and it gives it to you. Okay, so the first one here, that would be law of signs. So that would be F. All right, the next one, C squared plus A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos of Y. That Y is actually gamma. Okay, so alpha is for A, beta is for B, and gamma goes with C. You do need to know that for this test, what letters correlate to which one. So that's actually gamma. All right, that has the cos in it, so that's law of cosine, so that's B. This A1 is for area. Okay, so that would be the area formula, Heron's formula for area, so that one's C. Okay, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. That's Pythagorean theorem, that one would be E. All right, alpha plus beta plus gamma equals 180 degrees. That would be your triangle sum or your angle sum fact. So that one's D. And then this D equals alpha cos, oh, that's WF, it's really small. And then D equals A sine WF. That's that what we did yesterday. That's the simple harmonic motion. Pretty much all you got to know from simple harmonic motion stuff is the formulas and the names and stuff. So that's really nice. That one was word for word from what I could tell on your test. I'm not even sure he changed. Okay, so the only thing I noticed he changed is these. These changed orders from what I could tell. So just make sure you know those names. All right, this one is very similar to your test. Of course, he's going to change the function and probably change these things in the middle, but this question will be very similar. Of course, if you don't know your answers, you could just type these in. Again, make sure you're in radians then. If they give you pi, you need to be in radians. If they give you degrees, you need to be in degrees. So I would just do sine pi divided by 6, and I would type all of these in the calculator, so the first one is C. That should be an easy question. That one is on your test. Okay, the next one would be E. Sine pi over 3 would be D. Sine of 1 half would be A. And the sine of 2 pi would be B. So just type those in the calculator. That should not be a hard question. That should be a really easy one.
Okay, the question four is on the test from what I could tell. I think the only thing that might change and you're gonna have to read is this degrees. Okay, that degrees could change and this feet away could change. So those are the only two things that might change for question four. So make sure that you really read the question and that you um, answer this. So we're gonna be, this is 11. So this is where I would put my man at. So diagonal from the man is the opposite. And beside the man would be the adjacent because this is what we wanna know. So what trig function has O and A in it? That would be tan. So this is tan of 11 equals, and your opposite is 30. And your adjacent, we don't know, so that's X. Okay, I need to solve for X. So we're gonna times both sides by X to start with since that's dividing. So I have X tan of 11 equals 30. And then I need to divide by the tan of 11. All right, now if he's going to trick you on this, it's not gonna be the setup or anything. What he's going to trick you is how do I put the answers into the block? Typing it in the calculator is not the hard part. The hard part is, okay, that's the nearest foot per second, so round to the nearest hole is what that means. Okay, so if you put a decimal in there, you're probably going to get some points taken off. So this is 30, and again, now look, I'm in degrees, and my calculator is in radians. So you're going to have to, you know, check that every single problem. Okay, so 30 divided by tan 11. All right, so I would put in 154 in there. I would not put in the decimal. So 154. So just read, because every answer like that, it, he changes it the whole way through. Okay, question five is on there. So apply the triangle inequality to mark all the lengths that could not be the size of a triangle. More than one answer can be marked. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna take the two smallest sides, add them together, and they have to be bigger than the third side. So three plus four, Four has to be greater than 5. So 3 plus 4 is 7. So you're asking yourself, is 7 greater than 5? So that's a yes. So this one works. Okay, so you really just add the two big numbers together. So 5 plus 12, that's 17. Is 17 greater than 13? Yes. Okay, next one. 5 plus 12, that's 17. Is 17 bigger than 18? That one is no. So we would mark that one. Okay, 6 plus 6 is 12. Is 12 greater than 6? Yes. 6 plus 6 is 12. Is 12 greater than 11? That would be a no. Okay, and then the last one, six plus six, wait a minute, did I get that last one wrong? Six plus six is 12. I think I got that last one wrong. Is 12 plus 12 greater than 13? Yes. because 13 is bigger. Okay, this one I got wrong. I totally messed that one up. I think I was starting to confuse myself there. Okay, so this one here, six plus six is 12. Is 12 greater than 11? That's yes. Wow. 
It's going to be one of those days today, I guess. Okay, this one down here, 6 plus 6 is 12. Is 12 bigger than 13? So 12 greater than 13, that's a no. So you're marking all the no's. Okay. Make sure you fix that if you made that same mistake I did. All right, we should be good with that one. That one shouldn't be too bad. Okay, question six. I did see this one also on the test. Yep. Pretty close to almost being the same. Not quite the same, but pretty darn close. Close enough that you're really going to have to read. Okay, so this is 70 degrees. So you really need to read these. 50 feet, 65 feet. Those are the numbers that's going to change. The picture will be the same. The way you, the method you'll solve it will be the same. But the numbers you plug in will be different each time you do it. So this is law of cosines. Now if you forgot what law of cosines is. Because basically you're going to say one side's 50. The other side's 65. It doesn't matter which order you put that in. If you forgot what it was, go back to scroll back up to question two. And you got it right there. So that will help you out if you forgot what your formulas were. Okay, so this is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos of capital C. Remember, gamma and capital C are the same thing. All right. Okay, so a squared, we'll just make that be 50. B squared is 65. Plug those numbers in. And cos capital C is 70. Again, you're going to have to check your calculator every time you start a problem. Make sure the 70s in degrees. Make sure your calculator's in degrees. I would type this whole thing in as one big string just like that in calculator. Okay, 50 squared plus... 65 squared minus 2 times 50 times 65 cos of 70. Okay, now this is not your answer because that's one really large number. Just write it down. 4501.87. Okay, so that gives me c squared. So undoing a square would be a square root so I need to square root that number to get my answer okay so second x squared 4501.87 so that's 67.1 so you're going to pick the block that says 67 Okay, the next one is also on there. Pretty much word for word. The only thing that changes, the numbers are all different. Okay, so at least this is really following the study guide. So I would, when we're done, make sure you go through and do your study guide. So remember, alpha would be A. So A is alpha. And gamma is what we call C. All right, so I'm going to draw my triangle up here. So alpha is 40 degrees. Gamma is 68. And B is 16. Okay, so this is A. This is B. Wait, wait that wouldn't be B. That would be C. C. This would be B at 16. All right, so the first thing I would do is I would figure out what this degree up here was. Okay, so I would figure out 180 minus 40 minus 68, and that's gonna give you that degrees up there at the top. All right, so 180 minus 40 minus 68 is going to give us 72 degrees. 
So that one's 72. Of course, that's not what they want to know. They want to know what is A. So I would probably do my diagonals. So I've got this diagonal and then that going diagonal. So sine 72 over 16 is equal to the sine of 40 over A. Wow, that's a horrible zero. All right, we're gonna cross multiply. So A sine 72 equals 16 sine of 40, divide by the sine of 72. And then all you have to do is type that whole thing into the calculator and that will give you your answer for A. Make sure you read. This changes the whole time through your test. Two decimal places on that one. Okay, so 16 sine of 40 equals, I'll get my number there, then divide sine 72. Okay, so that gives me 10.81. And I would type that into the computer screen. Okay, question eight is definitely on the final. So, so far all of these questions are on the final. All right, you're gonna know this is the double triangle one because it's multiple block choice answers. And I have more of the choices on the next page. So this is the one that has the double um, triangles. So that's your cue. Okay, when you start seeing multiple answers for beta, by God, you better have two of them things checked, okay? You see multiple answers for C, you better have two of them things checked. All right, so we'll start with drawing our triangle. Okay, capital, all right, this says side A is eight. So that's eight, so this is capital A. And remember, alpha is capital A, so that's 45. All right, side B is 10, so this is the beta. And then this would be the gamma and that would be the C. All right. Okay, so the first thing I would do is you really don't have a choice. You have to find the B first, the beta, because it's the only thing on your diagonals that you got. All right, so we're gonna do sine of 45 divided by eight equals the sine of beta divided by 10. All right, from there, you're gonna to wanna to cross multiply. 10 sine 45 equals eight sine beta. Okay, we're gonna divide by eight. And then that will give me the sine of beta. And then I can type this in and get me a decimal. So 10 sine 45 equals divide eight. Okay, so that gives me 0 0.8839. We'll just round that. All right, now you need to ask yourself what undoes sine sine inverse. So beta is the sine inverse of this decimal. All right, we got to type that in. Okay, so sine inverse 0 0.8839. All right, so that's 62.1. That better be an answer choice. All right, so there's our first answer choice. I would mark these as you get them. It kind of makes it a little bit easier. 
All right, now I need to mark a second one for the second beta choice. So option number two, so this is option one for beta. So option two, all you have to do is a 180 minus that number, 62.1. That gives you option two. So 180 minus 62.1. 117.9. Okay, so that's option two. All right, so the next thing we're going to want to find is we're going to want to find gamma. So to find gamma, I'm going to do 180 minus 45 minus 62.1. That will give us one option for gamma. All right, 72.9, which we'll have to select that on the next page. Okay, so that's our option for gamma on the back. All right, then our second option for gamma would be 180 minus 45 minus, but instead of the 62.1, we're going to go with the 117.9. Okay, so that'll be the second option. Okay, so that's 17.1. And we'll select that on the next page over. Okay, now this is getting kind of messy over here, so I'm going to redraw this triangle on the back page. Probably over here so we can see the other options we got for C. Okay, so we've got 45. We have this is 8, this is 10, and our first triangle we had this at 62.1. And then the other one was 72.9. Okay, we're going to have to do the law of sines with that one. So I would do sine 45 over 8 equals, and I try to pick that one because it doesn't have the decimals. All right, sine 72.9 divided by C and then you'll solve for that one. So 8 sine 72.9 equals C sine 45. When you divide both sides, make sure you take sine with the 45. Sine 45, sine 45. Okay, so all I have to do is type this in the calculator that will give me my answer for capital C. 8 sine 72.9. Notice I always hit equals and then I do the bottom part. Equals, then divide sine 45. Make less mistakes if you do it that way. All right, 10.8 is one answer I need to check. It should be on the previous page. Got that one check mark down there. Okay, and then the last one, we got that 45 again. We have that 8. Now, instead of this being 62.1 and 72.9, I have that gamma is 17.1. And then if I go back to my other one, I got 117.9. Okay, and again, I'm finding that part up there. 
Okay, so sine 45 divided by 8 equals sine 17.1 divided by C. And again, you'll cross multiply. So basically, it's going to be this, except for instead of 72.9, it's going to be 17.1. But the rest of it's going to be the same. So this isn't a really hard problem, but it is a little bit tedious. There is quite a bit of work involved. Okay, type that in. So 8 sine 17.1 and then divide sine 45. All right, 3.3, .3, which is this one over here. Okay. All right, question number nine. Man, you do this study guide, you should be pretty good. Question number nine is on the test. Okay, man made triangular lake serves a reservoir for a small town and it needs to be cleaned. Each month, the town has to clean debris off the surface of the lake. Each uh, it costs the town $2 per square meter to clean up the lake surface. The dimensions of the lake are 213, 290, and 401. Find the total monthly cost to clean up the lake. Enter the answer as an integer with no money sign included. Okay, so if you know anything about um, integers, that means no decimals. Okay, so integer means no decimals. All right, so we need to find the area. And basically, all I've got to go off of the area is this side's 213, that side's 290, that side's 401. That's all you got. So what you got to do is you have to use that area formula from question two. So if you forgot the formula, just it's really handy to go back here. Scroll back to question two. And we got to do the S first. And then once we have the S, we just plug it into the formula. That's going to pop out the area. So I need to add the sides and divide by 2. That's our first step. So 401 plus 213 plus 290 divided all by 2. Okay. 401 plus 213 plus 290. 904, divide that by 2. I get 452. Okay, then I got to do the square root. Go back to your formula. So you start with the S, then you subtract the first side, subtract the second, then subtract the third. It's not too bad. Okay, 452 minus, and it doesn't matter the order of your sides, so just do it in any order you want. 452 minus 213, and then 452 minus 290. All right, I would plug that whole thing into your calculator and get you an answer. All right, might leave out the square root when I type it in because I feel like it gets a little bit too confusing when you type it all in. So I'm just going to type in everything but the square root. Okay. All right, I get a very large number here. So eight, nine, two, five, two, seven, three, three, six. Okay. All right, and then you want to square root that answer. So square root eight, nine, two, five, two, seven, three, three, six. All right, so that gives me two nine eight seven five point one nine six. All right, that's the area. And you're not quite done with that. So once you have the area, you need to figure out the cost. And he may change the cost. I don't know. He's definitely going to change the sides. All right, so what you need to do is take that number, times it by two for the cost. 
and that's going to give you your answer. Okay, so our answer is 59750.392. And when you plug in the answer in the computer, don't use the dollar sign, don't use any signs. Type in the number, leave off the change. So 59750. Okay. All right, question 11 is on there. Okay, or 10 on I me. Mean. Question 10, amplitude. So amplitude would be C. The period would be A. Make sure you actually memorize these. The frequency would be B. And the equilibrium would be that rest position. So that's E. Okay, so... Number 10 is going to be very easy. Um, 11 is also on there, or at least the version I looked at. Okay, so which one of the sides sometimes emits to two different triangles? That one should be the bad word that we don't say. So just find the one that spells a bad word, and that's the one you're going to pick. Okay. Okay, this one's also on there. Question 12 is also on there. Okay, so given two sides of an oblique triangle, so oblique automatically rules out Sokotoa and Pythagorean Theorem because those only work with 90s. Okay, you know the angle of the opposite of one of the given sides. And you know two sides. So you know two sides and an angle opposite of one of the given sides. So basically you have this setup right here. So what form would you have to use? Well, if you've got diagonals, I would use the wall signs. As far as I could tell, that one was on there. Word for word on my version. Okay, this one's also on there. Question 13 is on there. Find the distance from A to C. The only thing that he changes is some of the numbers in the triangle, but the process should still be identical. So you want to find A to C. So this is what we're finding. So here's where we are. So we know the opposite and the adjacent. So what trig function has O and A in it? Well, that would be tan. So we have tan, where are we at? 35 equals, opposite is X, adjacent is 80. So this one should be fairly easy for your test. Times both sides by 80. All right, and then just type that in a calculator and get your number. And then remember, you got to read how they want it inputted. Nearest foot, so you round to the nearest whole number. Okay, so we got 80. Tan, 35, and that would be 56. Okay. All right. Number 14 is also on there. Okay, so mark all the numbers that are solutions to the equation. I think there is several different ways that you could do this. Okay, and I think it just kind of depends on what way you want to do for it. You know, it just depends on what method you try to go for. You could plug these into your calculator and see if they all work. So that would be a method is to plug them all in. Um, you could use 
algebra on here, which I guess I'll probably show you that because that's the direct method, although it might not be the easiest. I don't know. But plugging these all in, that, that's a lot of plugging in. But that would also work, I think. Um, the other thing you could figure out is you could draw triangles for each one of these triangles and then figure out, you know, using your always skip trig class, which ones would they have to be the same? Well, they're going to have to be the same in quadrant one. And then because tan's positive, that means sine and cos are both negative. So you would want to pick the ones that are going to be in one and three. So then you could ignore the ones that are in two and four, technically. Okay. All right. Here's the direct method. I don't know. You're going to have to really decide for yourself what method you want to do on the test. My bunny got surgery today. She's getting fixed. So that was them calling, but I'll call them back later. All right. So the sine squared, if you remember, sine squared plus cos squared of theta equals one. Okay. So if I would solve this for sine squared, I would minus my cos squared theta on both sides. And I'm going to plug this in for sine squared of theta. So I have 1 plus cos of theta equals 2 times 1 minus cos squared of theta. I think this is the method they really want you to use. Um, so we need to do distributive property here. So I've got 1 plus cos of theta equals 2 minus 2 cos squared theta. All right, we're going to move both of these to the other side, and then we're going to end up factoring. So we're going to minus 2 on both sides and add 2 cos is 2 theta. Or cos 2, oh, I can't talk today. 2 cos squared of theta. All right, so what I have here is two cos squared theta. I'm putting these in order so that it, they're going to be lined up for whenever I go to factor. Plus cos of theta minus one equals zero. So let x equals the cos of theta. So now what I have is 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. All right, if we come over to the side and we do our x factor method, I know 2s are going on the bottom. The middle number is 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. All right, so I need to figure out what times to 2 and adds to 1. Well, the only thing that times to 2 is 2 and 1. So now I got a 2 and a 1 in there. If I end on a minus, that means the signs are different. The bigger one gets the plus. So this one's going to get the minus. 2 over 2 reduces to 1 over 1. So we're left with x plus 1 and 2x minus 1. All right, and then we're going to set both of those equal to 0. So this one would be x equals negative 1. All right, and then the other one over here, 2x minus 1 equals 0. So x would have to be 1 half. All right, we're going to plug our cos back in now that we have them equal to the things. So we're saying that cos of theta has to equal negative 1. And cos of theta has to equal one half. Okay. 
So if I draw my one half triangle, I got my one and my two there. That means my square root three has to be there. The threes can't be diagonal. So that has to be the 60 degrees, which means I'm looking at a pi over three. Okay, now you can type this in the calculator if you wanted to go that route. It might take longer, I don't really know. It's honestly just gonna be, okay, now you're gonna have to switch, I need to be in radians. It's really just personal preference, but pi over three is definitely one of the answers. Okay, so I've got cos of pi over three plus one. Okay, so let's type that in. One plus cos pi divided by three. Okay, so that gives me 1.5, and when I type it in for the other one, I'm also going to get 1.5. 2 sine pi divided by 3 squared gives me 1.5. So like I said, I don't know if you're going to want to work it out or if you're going to want to just type them all in. It's really personal preference. Okay, so where is cos also one half and positive would be down here. So this would have to be five pi over three. Okay, so there's your five pi over three. Where is cos negative one? So that would have to be over here. That's the fake triangle. So if I were to make my triangle, this would be negative one, zero, and one, so that would have to be a pi, and that would be your third answer. Okay, so you'll just pick the method out if you want to factor it like this, or if you just want to spend the time and go through and type every single one of those in. Like I said, I think it's personal preference. If you can't think of the factoring, definitely just type them all in. Okay, 15 is on the test. All right, find the area A equals 3, B equals 4, and gamma equals 40. Okay, so A equals 3, B equals 4, gamma is 40. So your formula is 1 half AB sine of C. And you just plug those in. Um, was that on our list? Nope. That's the one you're going to need to memorize. He's not going to give it to you. So It's an easy question if you know it. If you don't know it, then it's going to be a hard question. So make sure you memorize that one. Alright, you just literally type that in. And you're going to give it two decimal places. So 0.5, 3... 4 sine 40, and I already got this wrong, because guess what? My calculator's in radians, and I didn't check. Change it over to degrees. Okay. So that's 3.86. Alrighty. Alright, and that is it. Now there is one other problem. This test only has 17 questions. So it doesn't quite have the 20 questions we're used to. A lot of these are worth 8 points instead of 5. And the only other one... Just give me a minute to find a problem similar in the book. There's just one more problem on here that... You have to know the double angle formulas. I'm trying to figure out. I remember teaching it to you guys in class, so I know whenever we did do it, it's been a while because we were in a class when we did it. Okay, 
So page 652. So you need to know the double angle formulas. He will not give that to you on the test. You do need to know those. All right, page 652. And we're looking at 7 to 18. He is going to give you one very close to that on your test. Okay, so... Let's do number nine. Tan of theta equals four over three. They're telling you that you are between pi theta and three pi over two. And they want you to find the sine of two theta. So like I said, we did this in class. It's been a really, really, really long time. It feels like forever. And they want you to find the exact value and enter it into the calculator. So if you know your sign of two thetas, this really isn't too bad. All right. So we're between pi and three pi over two. So that tells me we're over here. Here's our theta. We're going to draw our triangle. So we've got 4 over 3. And both of these are technically negatives because two negatives make a positive. So those are technically negatives. So this is a 3, 4, and that has to be a 5 triangle. Okay, so... If you know these formulas, this is a lot easier. If you don't know the formulas, this is going to be really difficult. So your formula is 2 sine theta cos theta. Okay, so the sine of this would be negative 4 over 5. And the cos of that would be negative 3 over 5. And they're going to want you to give this answer as a fraction. Okay, so I would just type this thing in the calculator. Don't think too hard. Use your ABC button. Okay, and that gives me 24 over 25. And I would go through, and this has parts... A, B, C, D. I would just pick, you know, one of the odds, go through all of the parts, and just make sure that you're able to do all of the parts, okay? The half angles might also be fair game because it also gave two half angle ones. So I would say know, know the double angles, and as a backup, know your half angles. Just in case you got a different version from the one that I looked at. Because they're all different. Alright, so that should be it for your study guide. That should give you guys a really, really good overview for your test. I really think if you do your study guide, do, do another version on your own, you should be good for this test. Alright, is there any questions? So give me a yes that you have a question or a no that you don't have any questions. The good thing is, is I know this was long. Even if you zoned out, at least you can rewind and watch the recaps of it. Okay, so I know that Lucas is good, I think.
No questions. Okay, so Lucas, um, when is the test? I'd like you to test before Friday. Okay, and the test is really honestly up to you because you have to come up with your own 50 minute time slot where you are by yourself. You have an actual desk that's cleared off as best as you can. So just if you got a lot of stuff on your desk, like mine has a lot of clutter, I would just take all that, put it in a pile, throw it on the floor away from you. You know, so you need a desk with a table and a chair. You can't sit down on a couch. And I just, anytime between now and Friday, if you do it Friday, that's fine too. Just try to take it on your own time. The, the time is best for you. Where you don't feel stressed out. You Make sure you tell your family members around you not to bother you because you're doing a test. Make sure that you only have blank notebook paper and you show it to the camera that is completely blank. Show your calculator to the camera. I would keep the lid another place, you know, so that there's no questions on if you were cheating or not. Okay? So whenever you feel the best prepared between now and Friday, I would take your test. Okay? Um, Sophia, I really would do the practice test, you know, especially if you're going to test on Friday. And you already know, okay, today's Tuesday. That's two days to forget it. You know, but if you don't want to do the practice test, I mean, it is up to you. I would definitely do the practice test with the, the camera part where I showed you at the beginning just to make sure you downloaded it, just to make sure that, you know, you didn't have any kind of software problems when you download it before you do the real test where it's recording you. Okay. So, if you really don't want to do the practice test and this was enough, you know, technically you don't have to, but it only helps your grade. You know, I, I'm not going to be there, so honestly, I'll never know if you did the practice test or not. So, it's really up to you. Like I said, there's 17 questions, and a lot of them are 8 points instead of 5. But, it looked identical I mean almost identical to this where you're gonna have to really read and some of them are identical questions so the more you do the study guide without your notes and stuff I think the only better it'll get so I think this was one of the easier tests from what I had seen so I would really try to do your best on this one because this should be a good heavy hitter test for you where you guys should really be able to boost up your grade and get a good score on this one All right, so I think we need to plan Monday. I'm pretty sure we probably won't have school. If I'm going with my gut, my gut's saying we're not going to have school. So I think Monday we should pick up with starting the new stuff for the final. Um, 1230 again. Does that work for everybody? So let me know with a yes or no if Monday at 1230 works for you guys on YouTube again. Okay, so I got a yes from Sophia, a yes from Cameron. Okay, yes for everybody. All right. And then next week, we're going to have to really talk about how we're going to get these labs done. Because we got to get these labs out of the way, too, at some point. Okay, but I figure this gives me several days to think about the labs. So, all right. So, the next thing you need to do... Oh, yeah. we I do need your homework. So, you're going to need to take pictures of your homework and then... Um, email me your homework okay and I would definitely make sure your homework's done before your test so is Friday too soon to, ex to be expecting homework so give me a yes for Friday for homework or no I'm too busy and I need a little bit more time for homework so give me a yes or no on homework for Friday just be honest with me okay Yes for Sophia for homework for Friday. That's good. 
Does that work for you, Cameron and Lucas? I have one problem. Okay. Yeah, that's good, Cameron. One problem's not that bad. So, Lucas, I'm just waiting to hear from you if Friday's good for you for sending me your homework. And I'm also going to add in points for you guys watching the YouTube videos. Um, because I can tell that you were actively here and everything. So I'm going to add in points when I grade your homework for that too. Because I think that's important that you guys were actively watching these. Okay, so just email me in the live grades or on Remind. Whatever's easier to send me work. I don't really care. Just take pictures of your assignments. Send them to me. I'll grade them, and then I'll send them back once they're graded. Okay, so give that to me back by Friday. And I don't care if it's Friday midnight. That's fine. Just any time on Friday. Just give that back to me. And then take your test sometime between now and Friday. Um, and honestly, I'm not checking back with you guys till Monday. So if you wake up Saturday morning and that's when you do your test, I really won't know. Okay, so just get it done by the time we meet back at 1230 on Monday. Okay. All right, you guys have a good week and I will see you on Monday at 1230. Whether we're in class or we're meeting on the phone. All right. Bye everybody.